Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Saturday, July 16th. Over the next few days, we'll continue to have very hot temperatures across the Great Basin. We will also have thunderstorms, although today thunderstorms will be pushed a little bit further south with drier air moving in across northern areas. We'll also have some breezy winds today and tomorrow along the Sierra front up into Idaho with wind gusts generally in the 20s to right around 30 miles per hour in some spots. By Sunday, however, thunderstorms quickly return to the north, so we'll see thunderstorms push north into northern Utah, far northeast Nevada, and parts of Idaho. And then by Monday, we have a cold front moving through Idaho, so it will kick up winds with stronger wind gusts expected across Idaho with gusts between 35 and 45 miles per hour and low relative humidity. So we, we, will, we will have some high risk across Idaho on Monday with these gusty winds. This will also temporarily push thunderstorms a little bit further south yet again. Over the last 24 hours, we had scattered thunderstorms across much of Nevada into southern and eastern Utah, and then also into parts of central Idaho and Wyoming. These thunderstorms were on the wetter side, especially across Nevada and Utah, and we even had some showers further north up into Idaho. Great Basin fire activity yesterday was moderate with 24 new starts for just over 1,200 acres, and we did have a new large fire just south of Boise in Idaho. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've had precipitation, obviously, over the eastern half of the Great Basin predominantly, and this is where we've seen generally near to above normal precipitation associated with the monsoon moisture, with still continued very dry conditions over southwest Idaho and the western half of Nevada. Currently, our ERCs are still very high across much of the western half of Nevada. That's on the dry side. In northeast Nevada, where we have the Wildcat Fire, ERCs continue to climb and are now approaching the 97th percentile. In Utah, ERCs have come down with the moisture in place and have dropped to closer to normal, even over western and northwest Utah. Our satellite loop from this morning still shows the ridge dominating the Four Corners area, again providing those hot temperatures and keeping that monsoon moisture in place. We do have the trough of low pressure that's just off the northwest coast, which will push drier air into Idaho today. And also we will see another trough swing through the northern Great Basin on Monday. Later today, we will see again drier conditions push across the northern half of the Great Basin, keeping that lightning activity to southern and far eastern areas with no high risk today. Any thunderstorms we do see will be in areas where fire danger has come down and also will be on the wetter side. Again today, more isolated thunderstorm activity, certainly further south, maybe the southern half of Nevada into southern Utah. Wind gusts today will be similar to what we've been seeing, generally light to moderate winds, with more than moderate winds along the Sierra Front and up into central Idaho with most of the wind gusts in the 20s. As we move into Sunday, that ridge builds again and moisture quickly pushes north into southern Idaho, so we will see that return of lightning activity. Right now, we don't have any high risk. Much of these thunderstorms should be on the wetter side. We will continue to watch parts of southern Idaho and northeast Nevada that might be on the dry side for any high risk. But right now, again, it's looking wetter further south. You can see the next trough of low pressure moving into the Pacific Northwest, which will be the cold front that moves through on Monday. So on Sunday, again, those thunderstorms return. Again, should be the wetter variety, but we'll be keeping an eye on some of these northern fringes. We'll also see a few isolated thunderstorms return to parts of western Nevada. Wind gusts Sunday will be just slightly stronger than what we'll see today, with gusts probably in the upper 20s to around 30 miles per hour, or even low 30s at times along the Sierra front, and then generally in the 20s up into Idaho. As we move into Monday, this is when the cold front swings east across Idaho, so it will bring some cooler temperatures. Temperatures will cool by at least 5 degrees. We'll also see some drier air pushing in with the front, so we will see that high risk for the gusty winds and low relative humidity with that cold front in Idaho on Monday, with gusts up to around 40 or 45 miles per hour. We may have to extend this area of high risk a little bit further south into the southern Sawtooth and possibly even northeast Nevada, but we'll keep an eye on that. Otherwise, this will push thunderstorms again a little bit further south on Monday. Relative humidity will drop to around 15% or 10 to 15% in parts of Idaho. And again, this is where the strongest wind gusts above 40 miles per hour will be located. Further south, we'll still have the breezy winds across the northern half of Nevada. So winds will likely pick up around the Wildcat Fire, but still should be right around the upper 20s to around 30 miles per hour. But we'll see if those gustier winds push a little bit further south. The heat continues. Again, many valley locations over 100 degrees for the next couple of days, but we will see those cooler temperatures briefly in Idaho on Monday before temperatures heat back up again. Forecast amounts of precipitation are shown here. Obviously, with the wetter thunderstorms, we will see some wetting rains or at least some higher humidity and spotty precipitation across much of the eastern half of Nevada 
and Utah, with more spotty precipitation up into Idaho. But still dry spots are southwest and parts of central Idaho into northwest Nevada. So we move into Tuesday, that ridge remains in place. Still might be some dry air in Idaho limiting some of the lightning coverage, but still across the same areas of Utah into eastern Nevada we will have thunderstorm activity. Still no high risk as these would be generally on the wetter side or in areas where fire danger has decreased. So we move into Wednesday, similar pattern. And then by Thursday, we might have some drier air moving into western and northern areas of the basin. So lower relative humidities, less lightning potential, but also poor overnight recoveries and similar conditions on Friday. Seven day total precip, not much different in aerial coverage than the three day. Again, anywhere we have those thunderstorm activity, we'll see some spottier wetting rains. And then the eight to 14 day outlook, taking us from July 23rd to the 29th, still shows above normal temperatures in very dry conditions, especially across Idaho into northwest Nevada, and still the monsoon moisture taking shape and keeping thunderstorms over the southern portion of the region. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.